All right, y'all, I'm just gonna break it to you. I'm gonna be honest, this cocktail today is uh, ugly, okay? But you've gotta trust in the process, just like all of your DIY things, because here's the thing, it's gonna taste delicious. Okay, when I first start making a cocktail that's gonna be a little weird, I have to remind myself that it might not be perfect at first, but like any cocktail, everything can be customized. So let's go ahead and start here with the whiskey. I chose a whiskey that's got more butterscotch and caramel and I really like a whiskey that I'm comfortable with because with any project, you do have to start with something that just makes you feel a little more comfortable, whether it's a good pair of work gloves or a tool that you know is gonna work all the time. Now, uh, this cocktail ain't playing around today. Again, I wanna get your shakers out, take off their tops, and we are gonna be putting in two full ounces of whiskeys. Now, here's where things start to turn. While we've got this whiskey in here, give it a smell and then try to picture how this is going to taste with orange juice. I know, orange juice and whiskey, it seems like it's normal, but we've got this bright acidity to the orange juice. It's gonna have great aromatics in it. And we're looking for one full ounce, one full ounce of orange juice. And I like to make sure that it's got no pulp, only because you don't wanna have a pulpy drink afterwards. And then again, we're gonna pour it in. This is where the ugliness is really gonna set in because orange and brown together makes, well, it looks a bit like bin water, but remember, we're trusting the product process today. Now, the next thing you'll need is coffee. I don't care what coffee you've got, baby. Maybe you've got some like, I don't know, stuff that's been sitting in the pot all morning. Maybe you've got a great fresh pool of espresso. Maybe your favorite coffee shop down the street has amazing cold brew. But you want a coffee that you love. It's really going to be something that takes this cocktail from zero to hero over here. And we're only gonna use a half an ounce to start. But remember, if you think this cocktail is too sweet for you at the end, maybe you can't taste that coffee enough, then you're gonna want to add a little bit more. Half of an ounce though to start, let's pour it in. And again, you can see this sort of amber color that this is coming into. Remember that almost every cocktail needs a little bit of sugar. Whether that sugar is in the form of simple syrup or maple syrup, maybe you wanna make this more of a breakfast cocktail, mama ain't mad at you for that. You're just gonna go ahead and do what you feel is necessary. We're not putting in a lot though, y'all. This is only gonna be two teaspoons of simple syrup. We don't wanna make anything too sweet. Remember, we can always fix anything to be a little sweeter at the end by adding. So I'm gonna add two full teaspoons of simple syrup, and then we're gonna do the only pretentious thing I would ever make you do in any type of cocktailing, a Napa Valley swirl. That's right, Napa Valley swirl, and give it a smell. Mm, already coming together, making my mouth water. And last but not least, we need a little bit of lemon. So we're gonna take this lemon and we're gonna cut it into sixteenths. Oh, it's a math class. That's right, you wanna cut this lemon in half like a hamburger, not like a hot dog. Then you wanna cut each side into eight full pieces. I cut mine into quarters first. Then I take one little wedge, cut it one more time, and make that one sixteenth wedge. You're then just gonna Scotty Pippen that right on inside of your cocktail. You can Michael Jordan it, whoever your favorite player is. And then we're gonna give it a muddle. I wanna see you crush all of the aromatics from the oil, get out all of that citric acid from inside of the pulp. And once we're done, we're going to go ahead and one more smell before we add ice. I can already taste this as my new like brunch cocktail. When we've got our ice in, we're going to pour it. I like a generous amount of ice for this. And we then give it our magical shake. Remember though, for every cocktail that you shake, you just want a nice, relaxed shake face. Think if somebody were to tag you in a post without your permission, how would that face look? Go ahead, lift those arms. And we want 12 seconds on the clock. We're gonna give it a nice, full shake. Don't skimp on this part. You need the dilution, you need the temperature drop in order for this to be a cocktail. You can see my bubbles right inside, and then we're going to go ahead and take off its top. Leave your top on. This is a PG rated glass. Now, last but not least, we want to pour this in to our cocktail glass, and we're not going to put ice into this. We do not want to make this any more watery or diluted, but we do want to garnish with something a little extra, which is gonna be a round of lemon. Remember how I told you to cut that lemon inside like a hamburger rather than a hot dog? That's because it's easier to garnish with a round at the very end. Clear your cutting board and then go ahead and give me one thick round of lemon. And we're just gonna stick this right on inside of your cocktail. 
gonna do what it wants to do. If it floats, it floats, and give it a smell, and then give it a taste. Now remember, if you want this more bitter, go ahead and add more coffee, honey. Mama ain't putting you in the corner. If you need a little sweeter, Simple Syrup is your girl's Friday. And if you need a little less bitterness, you can squeeze a little bit more lemon juice in in order to make that perfect cocktail customized for your palate. Sip, sip, hooray.